So last week we had a video where I effectively did a one pen setup, but it was like the super basic setup that you get if you're like just starting a bullet journal. So, you know, writing your name in it and setting up your index, putting in a future log that's in a very simple style, doing, I don't know, another page of that, I suppose, <laughs> monthly log and then weekly log and daily log. But I don't know about you, this kind of setup, while it is, you know, true to the, I don't know, starter kit bullet journal type experience, I, I wouldn't have stuck with bullet journaling if this is all I was setting up. Yes, it is very functional, but I like things that are just a little bit pretty, just a small amount. So today we're going to set up a one pen bullet journal setup, which means I'm only allowed to use one pen. Great. Uh, but I am going to try and make it a little bit more decorative than just title and then list. Yeah. Hello to everybody who is here on the live and hello to everybody who is here on the replay. It's very excellent to have you here with us. Let's do a bullet journal setup. So rather than starting this in a completely new bullet journal, I am just going to continue using this one, mainly because we're not actually setting this one up for me. We're just setting this up to rise ourselves to the challenge, you know, actually have a go at doing this one pen type thing. I think the biggest thing that has made me a little bit I don't know, nervous, I suppose, about this is that I am a pencil fanatic. I love going in with pencil first. I like being able to make sure I've placed things correctly and that stuff is kind of where I want it to be before I commit to pen, but we can't use it because this is pen only and, and one pen alone. I don't know if you can tell, probably not, but I already have like black smudges all over my fingers because I got out my bucket of black pens to pick which one I wanted to use. And yeah, anywho, so we do need to start by picking a black pen and I'm not sure if I want to go with a kind of ballpoint thing or a fine liner. I know that I don't want something that's too big or too small in terms of nib size because if you're using it for everything you kind of want to like middle of the pitch kind of thing. Like, oh member for three months congratulations Kim that's very exciting. Greetings to South Africa from New Zealand. I hope that South Africa and you are well. <laughs> But yeah, I we certainly won't be using a sharpie. For one, it's blue, not black, and uh, I don't I don't think this notebook paper is gonna stand up super well to a sharpie. But we do need to pick a pen. So my kind of leanings are probably towards ballpoint, just because it is my own personal preference. I find it easier to write with. But I figured I'd get your input. What do you guys reckon? Should we go fine liner or should we go ballpoint? So. In terms of fine liners, we obviously have like microns and that kind of stuff, but we also have a Dingbat's Ato pen. We've got ooh, Ballpoint. This is the like, Bullet Journal official pen. So hmm, maybe, maybe. Let's see. This one is a nice basic ass like Ballpoint pen from El Cheapo Kmart. <laughs> I know not, not everybody has Kmart, but it is just like your regular run-of-the-mill super basic black ballpoint pen. We could use a friction. I mean, that's a really good option if you are just starting and don't have a pencil because you can erase it. Um, I know that people say that one of the issues with the friction is that uh, if it heats up, like your notebook heats up, like you leave it in the sun, you can get your uh, ink to disappear. So you know, we don't really want that so much. Uh, so we might put that one to the side. The question was about what type of journal I'm using. This journal is from Your Bujo. Uh, I do have a link to their website down in the description, I think. <laughs> I know, Deb, clearly a poll is required. I was just being lazy. I didn't want to get out my keyboard, but okay, let's do the thing. Got the keyboard. So the option is fine liner versus ballpoint. What do you guys reckon? Pen, 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 pen ask your community. So if you're here on the replay and you didn't get a chance to vote, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sure I can find a better question for you guys to answer about later. But let's see, we've also got this one, which is the Oracle from Baron Fig. You might not be able to tell, but there is writing here. Let's see if I can... Eh. Can you see it? So it's like, without question, ask again. It's like the magic eight ball, but it's a pen. So the idea is that you could ask the pen a question and then like roll it on your desk and see which one it says. But that one is another ballpoint pen. Hmm. Let's see. 
Wow, 50-50 at the moment. <laughs> or 52 for fine liner. Let's see, what other fine liners do I have in here? Because my personal favorite pen, the Paper Mate Ink Joy Gel, that one is a ballpoint pen. Liquid Flare is, it's got like a felt tip, so I'm going to call it a fine liner. Like, I think it fits more into that category than it does into this one. Uh, Pilot G2, that one is a ballpoint. Let's see. This is a highlighter, so that's a distinct no. And this guy here is a paint liner pen or a line painter pen. That one's effectively a type of permanent marker, so that's a no. Uh, you are copper, so no. Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen, that one is indeed a fine liner. We have the Sarasa Clip, Zebra Sarasa Clip, which I always get confused between the Sarasa Clip and the Pilot G2. And then I think I've got another Pilot pen somewhere, which is called like the I don't even remember. <laughs> like, you guys are so split in terms of your votes. Yeah, the Inkjoy gel pen makes me makes my soul happy. I have a full drawer just dedicated to them because this is the one that I use on an everyday basis. I'm pretty sure that my current Inkjoy gel pen is running out because it has started getting a little bit faint on the lines. Uh, we have more of the Atto pens in different sizes, a pencil, which we're not going to use. We have the, what, the Baron Fig Squire pen. The Baron Fig pens, like this one, this guy, and I think even the Bullet Journal one, they're all very nice pens. They're very weighty, but the ink is also super fluid, and that's why you can see I have some of this all over on my fingers, because I was playing around with the nib of this one, and then ended up, like, drawing on myself. But these two... They feel very, very nice in the hand. They are a lot shorter than other pens, though, aren't they? By, by a fair bit. I don't know if you can really see it, but... Anywho, <laughs> ask the Magic 8-Ball if you should use it. It's a good idea, eh? We have a slight preference towards ballpoint, though. Because I quite like... Oh, this is tricky, eh? Like, where's my where's my, my beautiful paper, mate? You're in here somewhere, my friend. Okay, so this is a Papermate flare pen, and I actually really love using this. The problem is, is that it is waterproof, so as soon as you're using, um, like, Tombow or anything else that's water-based, you're probably going to smudge this one. But today we're not using a water-based pen, so we're just using one pen, you know? So I'm like, ooh, that might be a good option, that guy there. But we do seem to have a very very slight leaning towards the ballpoint so we are going to go with ballpoint and then we can ask the magic oracle pen to see which ones we should actually keep in in the rotation there are a couple more pens in here this guy is also a ballpoint pen this one is like a weird pen and it also bleeds like nobody's business so we're just going to put that back and then this guy here is the pilot sign pen this is a lovely pen um, it has quite a thick nib. I don't know if you can really see it. It's a fair bit thicker than uh, the guys down here. So it's not really suitable for what we're trying to do today. But the quality of black, it's, it's oh, chef's kiss. Mwah. So we'll put these cheeky boys back into their little drawer. Hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. I know that you said that the live stream noises last week weren't so bad. So hopefully putting the pens back in the drawer isn't the worst thing ever. So, this is our roundup of ones that we may possibly be using. Now we need to see which of them is actually going to be the proper contender. So, we've got Zebra and Pilot and Kmart versus Baron Fig. Oh, oh, we could do like a battle. Okay, we're going <laughs> to get these off, off of here. There you go. I feel like if we're going to use the Oracle pen, it probably shouldn't be part of the rotation to actually have as part of the competition, but we're going to keep it here anyway. <laughs> Let's see. So we'll jumble the pens up. Oh, that's not a nice sound. <laughs> yeah, it's like a pen smackdown. It's like a pen bracket fight thing. Alrighty, first contender is scribble, scribble, scribble. The shitty came up pen and up against the shitty came up pen we will have oh no no my baby the paper mate ink joy gel pen okay and up next we have there we go it is the zebra sarasa clip 
put you down here. And just so you know that I'm not cheating. And it's going to be that one. Alrighty, it's the Baron Fig Oracle pin. Ooh, competition. And we'll just do it into two halves here because it's easier. It's going to be, there we go. We have the Pilot G2 versus the Baron Fig Squire and the Bullet Journal official pen versus the Muji gel pen. <laughs> now, I think the problem with doing this one is that there are a lot of different options here. So I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a, a, a gorgeous eraser, right? <laughs> this is my coin to flip. So if it's blue, it's the top option, yeah, for any of these. And if it's brown because the wrapping came off because this is an old as heck eraser, then it's going to be the bottom option. Okay, so eh, flip. Oh, it, you can't see, but it was blue. So the top option has lived to fight another day and this guy is out of the running. There we go. <laughs> and then we flip, which again, oh, there you go. You can see it. It's brown. So that is the bottom option. So the Baron Fig Oracle pen is next for our contenders, then <laughs> again, you can't see it because it's really hard to flip an eraser, but it was blue. So that is the, oh, see, he's just packing this ads running away. The Pilot G2 has come on up here. There we go. And last one, <laughs> oh, it's blue, the Bullet Journal official pen. Alrighty. So now just like common brackets, we're gonna get rid of these sore losers, chuck them away. Yeah, the oracle pen just feels lucky right so we have the crappy kmart ballpoint pen <laughs> up against like probably one of the most expensive pens i have the oracle pen and then we've got the pilot g2 versus the bullet journal we'll go with this one first so again blue means the top contender is going to be the winner and then brown means that the bottom one is going to be the winner okay whoops i just like to like i'm just gonna like roll it like this because if i keep flipping like that it feels unfair so eh. Alrighty, that's blew up, which means that the crappy ballpoint pen is the winner. <laughs> Sorry, Oracle pen, you're not that lucky. Alrighty, the crappy ballpoint pen. Who's it going to go up against? Is it going to be the bullet journal official or is it going to be the pilot G2? There we go. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, it's the bullet journal official versus the crappy ballpoint pen. Okay, now I'm going to get you guys to pick, right? So you guys get to have the final say. It's the People's Choice Awards of bullet journal penmanship. <laughs> My little keyboard here so I can write you up your poll. So do you think for our one pen setup, should we use the bullet journal official pen? Bullet journal official. Or should we use the basic ass ballpoint pen? basic ass ballpoint pen i have a personal leaning but i want to know what you guys reckon so the poll is up now cast your votes this is when like in the game shows they would do like the close-up shots of them smiling like hey it's me you can see that bullet journal logo right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or is it or is it this guy the <laughs> Anko ballpoint pen uh you're a great pen my friend but you can see that that good satisfying click or this kind of like squiggle up the end <laughs> kind of thing going on oh contentious we have 46 percent for the bullet journal official 55 percent for the basic ass ballpoint pen oh, oh it's a contest who's gonna win you have approximately 10 seconds left to vote 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 two, one, ding, 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 ding. Alrighty, it is the basic ass ballpoint pen, which is kind of the way that I was leaning towards, so that's all good. I mean, if we're gonna do a one pen setup, it might as well be with like the crappy pen. Like, yeah, why not? <laughs> well, we're going with the idea of we spent all of our money on this nice notebook and now we don't have any money for any pens. So we're just gonna use the pen that our mom has like, you know, sitting by the phone or something like that. So this is good. Excellent. Yeah, squiggle off the end. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to describe how you'd like, I was about to say turn the pen on, but I didn't. So now you can't bully me for it. Anyway, <laughs> bringing back our notebook, after all of that excitement, we are going to do our 
yeah, the junk drawer pen. That's kind of what I mean, right? So we're using our junk drawer pen. We're using our Your Bujo bullet journal. You can see like Your Bujo, as it says here. And flipping past our basic ass setup, we're going to do something that's a little bit more decorative. Just a little bit. Okay. So we're going to start here on our next available page. Now, should we start with a... I feel like I should start here because it's more true to how you'd actually start in a bullet journal. Yeah, like pouring champagne into a plastic cup, indeed. <laughs> I think that we're going to start on this page because it's kind of similar to how you'd actually start in your bullet journal. Like most bullet journals that I work with, they have a piece of cardstock on the front here and then the first page is actually here. So <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we're going to put it here and we're going to start with a like a key page I suppose am I allowed to use a ruler or is a ruler illegal I feel like if it's one pen only then I'm it's like illegal to use a ruler it's very nerve-wracking so this is why I do pencil first because it gives me a kind of like a safety net I suppose of, of stuff that I can do oh yeah there we go we have one for illegal the ruler is illegal we can't possibly use it all right, no ruler for me. This is going to be a key page and possibly, let's see. <laughs> yeah, you guys say, okay, we've got two for a ruler and most people are legal. And then we got ruler and then one pen. Okay, yep, fair, fair. All right, ruler. Okay, two, three for ruler. See, some people are being nice to me and saying that I can use a ruler. I mean, technically speaking, if it is one pen, yes, it is only, like, the one pen. Like, okay, so we've got some people who are obviously very into the idea of me not kind of hurting my hurting myself in terms of not being able to draw a straight line. <laughs> a poll, a poll. I need somebody to be an official, like, copywriter for me. Uh, so come and, like, put my polls up for me so I don't have to write about myself. I know. Life is so hard. Not really. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. You just you blindfold me. Wow. <laughs> like, there we go. We have 100% for illegal right now for the ruler. Oh, okay. Now now 85% of people say I can use a ruler. So, okay. We do have a lot of nice people here. It's just the people who think that it's illegal uh, are very vocal on, on the offset. It's like fair. <laughs> Alrighty. <sighs> so, for my key. Do I want to put the key in the middle like I have in my new journal setup or do I want to put it more like towards the top? Because at least if I put it at the top, then it, it makes the setup a lot easier. Hmm. Because I was kind of thinking of just centering it on the page and doing the key kind of like how I have it in my current uh, journal. I was going to do a blindfolded setup at one point in time. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, I guess I need to go and invest in a blindfold. I mean, I don't think you really need to, like, invest in a blindfold. You could probably just use something you have lying around the house, but still. Yeah. You're going to say that you should be able to make it as neat as you want. All righty. That's fair. Okay. It's a team, team ruler has come through, and they've said that I'm allowed to use a ruler. So I'm going to use a ruler, even if it is only to kind of find the middle of the page and stuff like that. So across this notebook, we have 13 and a half dark red spaces which isn't frustrating at all and I say 13 and a half I mean 13 and a half centimeters uh we also have 19 and a half down which is doubly annoying because this is not a size I'm used to so if I were to actually be doing a proper one pen setup for myself I would probably go with something that I am more familiar with in terms of sizing It'll just make my life a little bit easier so 13 and a half means six and a half and a half so it's like in there but I'm not going to touch the page because otherwise <laughs> that's just going to make a mess I'm going to do basic not calligraphy but oh gosh really should have tested this pen first not a good pen oh my gosh I'm going to have to do a scribble test because that is that is certainly something okay my basic ass came up pen is already letting me down because I know that you can write. So just like stop being a plonker. I just need to write with a little bit more conviction. Stop being afraid of your journal, Jessica. <laughs> like, there we go. Key. 
it cute and keep it simple. That looks all right. It is not central, but it looks all right. So, yeah, the cheap ass pen. Why are you letting me down? Probably because you're a cheap ass pen. So we're going to go from that six and a half. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Six out. You're six and a half. Yep. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six out. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. That will be there. Eh. There we go. I'm thinking that it's probably worthwhile doing a uh, grid spacing guide on this side. Not that I'm really going to use it because, again, I'm not really using this setup. Also, probably should have made sure that I was putting this in a space that seemed reasonable. So we've gone five down from the top. So we're going to do a similar thing from the bottom. So five down from the bottom is here. That is a very large key. Maybe we have lots of symbols we want to record. I can probably think of enough symbols to fill it up. So it's all good. So put in our nice little key box. Keeping it cute. And sweet looking. I'm also not super used to doing ruled lines with a thinner pen. I typically, when I do ruled lines in my journal, like to opt for a thicker one because then, first of all, I just like the look of it. I like it when it's a little bit um thicker in general in terms of my line ruling. But uh, I also find that it's easier to get the pen to sit properly on the dock grid because if you have a thicker pen, you have more of an opportunity to actually hit the dock grid. <laughs> Whereas with your thin pens, it's a little bit harder to make sure that it actually hits it. So yeah, we could do a key and color code. Obviously can't put any color coding in for this one because it is the bam, one page setup. Um, so side question, if you have Discord, should your name be in green? Uh, depends. If you are part of the... If you're either part of our YouTube memberships or our um, Patreon like patrons, uh, then you should have a colored name on Discord. If you are, let's see, I'm going to put this task in while I'm trying to talk. Um, depending on your tier, you'll have a different color. But if it's not working, then just flick me a message on either Discord or if you're on Patreon, you can do a Patreon message. Uh to let me know that it's not working for you and we can figure it out. Started. And cancelled. And finished. S H. I don't know about the dry time on this pen, so I should probably be making sense, like sure that I'm not smudging stuff by leaning on it. Um, oops. Let's see. That is what I like to use for events, but that's because I like to be able to tick events off if I've actually gone to them. So this guy means that it was not attended for some reason. So not attended, and then this is a cancelled event, at least for how I like to do my key. And then if I actually attended it, I usually just put a tick, tick, attended, D-E-D. Because -E -D. I know that in the original bullet journal system, this guy here is for a note, but I uh, I prefer to not fully cross off my events or like any kind of entry into my bullet journal, mainly because I think it looks messy. I know it's so that you're like striking it out. You can't even see it anymore. It's gone, but no. Nee. Um, okay, so we had the question of would it be cheating if you used the erasable pens? It would not be cheating. I don't think so. It is still one pen. Uh, the only issue that I have with the erasable pen is that the the quality of black is kind of dull, and I know that if I was trying to use that in a one pen setup, I wouldn't super like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't enjoy it. 
So let's see. Um, events and my notes I usually do as an exclamation point. Note. And then we can use some other symbols. So maybe if something's a priority, it can get an asterisk. Ready? Did I spell that wrong? Prior it. E. Yep, there we go. And I probably didn't need quite as wide a box for this, but I used it, so here we are. Um, a little mail icon for email. A little house for housework. Home slash housework. And well, we could do a little birthdays one. Yep, that sounds good. Birth day. So that can be like a, a party hat. <laughs> there you go. It's a party hat for a birthday. <laughs> you can barely see it. Let's see. I can't remember if I... There you go. There's our, our beautiful key. It's looking pretty gorgeous. I don't know what I've done to my camera, but I'm pretty sure that my, maybe it's my frame rate. I don't know a lot about cameras. Um, I'm pretty sure that that one's kind of dropped for some reason, because if I go across here, it's not very smooth at the moment, but oh well, it is what it is. It's something for future just to sort out. Holidays and vacations, sounds good. Alrighty, let's see. Holiday. Vacation day. Uh, symbol for that. Du -du 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 -du. We're gonna need. We're gonna do a heart for something. So I'm just gonna say connection time. because it's one of my favorite symbols to draw because it is easy. And we're gonna do holiday slash vacation day as a little star. So that's easy too. And then we have two boxes at the bottom and two boxes at the top. Or should we put one more in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suitcase, plane or sun. That would have made a lot of sense. <laughs> paper plane for holiday. Paper plane, paper plane, paper plane. And there we go. We'll put a paper plane in for something. I'm just going to put it down for travel. There we go. Because sometimes maybe this person travels for work and for home and for everything else. Makes sense. Tink. Alrighty. So the key page is looking very cute. It's also finished. Uh, we have kind of kept it quite minimal though. So maybe we can go and add in a little bit of extra <laughs> je ne sais quoi something. Let's see. I might just put like a little drop shadow type thing on the back so that then it just feels a little bit more decorated. I do not like ruling in this direction so if this line turns out cattywampus uh you know just means that I know that I did a bad. That doesn't look too bad though. There we go. Now it has some decoration. Who is the bujo for? Uh this is for the hypothetical person. It's not, not a real person, not a bullet journal that I'm giving away or anything like that. This is just my R&D Bujo that I'm using at the moment. I've been using it as part of the um, like bullet journal basic series. Uh, most recently, I just set up a really basic start of journal setup in here to show what the original kind of method would describe as how to start a bullet journal. So in the interest of having repeated elements on all of the pages of our setup so that things look cohesive, we are going to be using this type of drop shadow in more pages of the setup. Uh, I like it when things are matchy-matchy. I like it when things look like they actually go together. So we are going to use 
this type of a drop shadow later on. Probably could have not done all of these lines because it would have taken a lot less time, but I like spending time on my journal when I set it up, so it would make sense that this person does too. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, there are a lot more time consuming things that you can do with just one pen, so you know, this, this kind of thing isn't actually that bad. I am just sitting at a really awkward angle to do these vertical ones. Scrink, scrink, scrink. But what, I just, I feel like I've been doing a lot of new bullet journal setups recently, uh, because I have, in a way. So we, what, we just set up my square one, which I love, and I'm very excited to move into come September. And I've been setting up a different journal, which is the secret project, which is, like, not so secret, and probably everybody knows what it is, but it's fine. Uh, so that one's getting set up, and I'm slowly making a video for it, so that's exciting too. And then we just did this guy, and now we're doing this one, which is, like, effectively a new bullet journal setup, so all good. Let's see. Oh, we have a question. Okay. Question was about perks. What YouTube membership do you get the extra live stream? Okay. I think Deb's got, got you sorted. So yeah, anybody who has a green name on YouTube are people who have got, they've signed up through our like YouTube uh, membership. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a perk that YouTube puts on by default. I don't really have any control over that one. Um, which means that people who are part of our Patreon memberships, um, that they don't have a colored name over here except for Deb and Britta, because they are my mods. <laughs> Appreciation! Um, but yeah, it, it's over on Discord, where everybody who has a membership of some description, they get a coloured name. So, the key looks cute. We have our drop shadow. I love it. We were talking about doing a grid spacing guide, and I think we're going to over here, just because this is weird, so <laughs> I might want to keep looking back at it. So as part of that, I am going to jump into my grid spacing calculator so that I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, what's that? Random document. Okay, that makes sense. My computer did this really fun thing yesterday where it just randomly shut down on me and I lost a whole bunch of stuff, which is great, said nobody ever. So this here is the grid spacing calculator. So I'm just going to move cheeky boy over here to the side. So what happens here is that we effectively just have to say like how many dot grid spaces do we have in both the vertical and the horizontal direction and then we play around with the number of spaces between segments but we said that our vertical dot grid spaces was 19 and a half times two whatever that is not 950 times two that's crazy uh so we had yep 39 down and we will have 27 across i believe because that's yeah 27 and a, yeah, 13 and a half times two is 27. Okay, so according to this, if I want two separate segments, I need to have uh, 19 dot grid boxes per segment, but I'm going to have one left over. So rather than having just one at the top or bottom of the page, I can specify, hey, I actually want one dot grid space between each of those two segments. So now I have no remainder. Huzzah. I don't like remainders. They make me uncomfy. The nice part about this, though, is that for thirds, if I want to separate the page vertically into three separate segments, then I need to have 13 dot grid boxes uh, with no remainder. So that's all good. If I want to do quarters, I need four, but I'm going to have three remainder. So instead, I'm going to try and put one in between each of them. Okay, that looks cute. And I think halves, thirds, and quarters is pretty much all I want to use anywho. So we'll chunk that to the side. My, my little my little calculator. So for our vertical one. So vertical, we said that there were 39 spaces down. Tink, tink. So we have 39, and then we said 19 dock red boxes. All right. So that'll be... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So that'll be here. Here is going to be our halfway mark. Nice. I'm going to roll that through. Probably could have just put in one small space, but I didn't. Now we're here. 
So that is the halfway mark for my 19. And then we had one dock grid space for the second half. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see what I mean by that. So we have the top section being 19 spaces, then a one box divider, which is like this guy here, which you can barely see my mouse, but it's that one dock grid box between the segments, and then another 19 in this section here. Nice. Okay. It makes it a lot easier. So we've got those two. That's our halves looking cute. We also probably want to put in some just numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so on and so forth. Make it so that we can see the full page again. There we go. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It means I won't have to count it out again, which is nice too. 18, Wait a second, where's 17? 18 again, 19, 20. This is what I get for trying to count while I'm talking. <laughs> 21, 22, 23. I need to wipe off the tip of my pen because it's got a little piece of dried ink on it. And that's why it's skipping. Ew. Ew. Come on, came up pen, why are you letting me down like this? I mean, it was not to not be expected. Like, it's a fine pen, but uh, it's not um, not the best quality. 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Wait, have I missed numbers again? No, we said 39. Okay, 36, 37, 38, 39. I had a panic moment for a second there. I'm like, there's only supposed to be 36 boxes down. I'm like, no, Jess, you're fine. Stop whining. Okay. So in terms of our thirds, thirds were nice and easy. It was just 13 with no boxes in between. Okay. So for thirds with no segments or like no spacing between the segments, we need 13 dock grid boxes for each segment and there is no remainder. Love it. Okay. So for that one, we're going to do a different type of line just so that they kind of look different to each other. So one to 13, then we do a little dotted line. All the way across. I'd be curious, do you actually use grid spacing guides? I know that some people swear by them. Uh, I set myself up more of like a grid spacing uh, ruler. So it's just a little off-cut piece of paper that I then do all of this information on, but a little bit more condensed. Mainly so that then I can take that little ruler to whichever page I'm working on. It just makes it a little bit easier to actually use rather than kind of like flipping back and then trying to count it out on the page you're working on and yada, yada, yada. Um, so it's just, yeah, a little bit more straightforward to just take a piece of paper with you to wherever you're working on and line it up with the dock grid that's already there. But yes, so 13 doubled is 26. So we'll put that between 26 and 27. Again, with our little dashed line. I find that if I'm only using one pen and I can't thus color code things, unless you're using a multi-pen, of course, uh, I just change the line style. So we'll do like a dashed one. We've got the solid one. We could probably do a dotted one. I find dotted lines a little easier to do with a fine liner rather than a ballpoint pen because the ballpoint pen kind of relies on the ball moving. If you're just dotting, it doesn't really move as much, but hey all good so that's our thirds which is looking pretty good so we've got halves with the solid thirds with the dashed ah new member yay thank you thank you round of applause round of applause for joining the team with capital t i have a real hard time remembering who is already a member and just like resubscribing kind of a thing because it's kind of like a, you know, a subscription type thing and who is 
brand new, fresh on the boat kind of a thing. But either way, ting. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. See, I technically... I set up a grid spacing ruler and I do use it occasionally, but more often than not, I have low trust of myself. So I'm like, no, you probably stuffed it up. Uh, we're just going to count it out again. <laughs> Let's see. Um, for our quarters. Yeah, quarters was going to be the next one. And we were going to have a space in between each of them from memory. So for quarters, we need one dot grid space between our larger segments, and each of those segments is going to be nine. Cool? Cool. So, nine is there. So, we'll put a little, little dot in, and then a one space here, and then 19 will be at the halfway mark with a space, and then 20 to 29... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that looks good. And we're just going to do just dots effectively for, for this one. So I don't need to turn the page so much, which is all good. Again, would be a little bit easier if I was using a uh, fine liner for this one, just for the fact that you don't have to kind of very very slightly move the pen to get the ink to flow but it's all good and then once we've done it in this direction we need to do it in the other there we go i also find the descriptor of um, horizontal versus vertical grid spacing to be a little bit tricky because i um you know i would consider these to be horizontal divisions kind of a thing because you're cutting your page up into horizontal strips but the way that you actually do the calculation is with the vertical dot grid measurement so then do we call it the vertical grid spacing or do we call it the horizontal grid spacing i mean the nice part about the calculator that i use is that it honestly doesn't matter which way around you do it like if you call this vertical or horizontal the calculator is still going to spit out the right information which i like There we go. Oof. Somebody made a choice with doing <laughs> dots instead of little lines. I mean, it probably doesn't help that because we do have that uh, spacer in between each of the segments, there's more to do. Like, we would have only had to do two if there was no spacer because we could have relied on the ones for the halfway mark and not have to have done those but it's cool we're halfway there with this one and I probably won't do quarters in the like other direction mainly because I don't often find myself separating my page that way unless I'm doing a monthly calendar I suppose that's probably the only time that I'd actually really use it then you do like four days on one side and three days on the other so I guess that's the closest to actually splitting my page into quarters in that vertical direction that I would actually use but yes I think it'd be kind of fun to do a one pen setup at some point that's like actually for me I was tempted to do one for a uh, the new journal the square journal but then the square journal is just such a good opportunity to use washi tape so i'm glad that that one because i like to put these things to polls if you don't often check out the community tab on on the channel that's where i hide i don't hide but that's where i put all of these little polls and stuff so like for instance the video we're doing here uh this live stream with the one pen setup this was a, a community pick yeah so picked by the community i put forward four different options for what we were going to have for this live stream and this is the one that came out victorious the other one were close contenders though we had a pretty pretty even split between each of them so it's good to know that those other ideas are things that people are still curious to see um 
let's see. You're already a full Patreon member, but you wanted to have the cute icon and the green name. <laughs> see, I thought that you were already a member somewhere. So I'm just like, my memory doesn't serve me that badly, right? Nah, all good. Well, pleasure to have you as part of this team as well. Huzzah, double teaming. T tag teaming? Team tagging? I don't know. Let's see. So, let's go see. We now need to do our other direction. So we have 27 dot grid spaces across the notebook. Uh, and that means that we need 13 with a one remainder. So we're going to put that one remainder in between the segments. So then we have 13 uh, dot grid spaces for the first segment, then a one dot grid space, like spacer, and then 13 dot grid boxes for the next one as well. Glad that you were able to catch a light. It's very exciting to have you here. For our third, we need nine, and then that's all good. Uh, and then for quarters, we could do six with spaces, but we're not going to bother doing quarters, mainly because I don't want to do all the dots again. <laughs> but putting in our halves at least, because that one was nice and easy. Actually, we'll put in our numbers first, because that, that'll make it even easier. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Because yes, I have to say all the numbers out, otherwise we'll have like you know the eighteen double up happen again. We'll really make sure we're putting seventeen in here. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27 as promised. And then, like it said on our little grid spacing calculator, we need to go to the 13 mark for our halves. There we go. And we have a one dot grid spacer between those two halves that in cute making it nice and solid and black and then from our calculator it tells us that for thirds we need to have nine dot grid spaces in between in between get out for each of those segments Alrighty, let's see Oh, yeah, do a stretch, grab a snack, all the good things. Oh, bedtime for you. Well, I, I hope that you sleep well. I mean, sleep is important. So, how am I doing? I'm doing okay. I am smudging my pen a little, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> nine is the spacing, so we'll put in those. And then nine times two is 18, so our other one will go here. Here. And these lines are going to be a little bit easier to do compared to those dots from before. But it's kind of, I like the idea of having the same type of line for the same type of split. So both this way and that way, we have the solid lines for halves, we have the dashed lines for thirds. And then if we were doing quarters in this direction, we would use the dotted line again. But we're not going to because I CBF. <laughs> To be completely honest, I mean, again, I'm not actually using this for myself. This isn't going to somebody. So we're just setting it up as an example of the fact that we could. It's a bit of fun. It's a bit of shameless creativity time. <laughs> it's looking pretty cute, I think. Now, we did do a effectively a one pen set up at one point with the um, the giveaway journal. Like the first giveaway journal I made was um was one that I did mainly with one pen. I think we also had like maybe a gray Tombow in there as well, just for some highlighting, that kind of thing. But that one was very much one pen. I did pencil first though, because it was going to somebody else. I wanted to make sure that everything was 100% the way that it should be, not missing the number 17 like before. <laughs> but yeah. That one's somewhere on the channel, <laughs> Some, somewhere in the archive. 
We need like a directory, honestly. We have a lot of videos now and sometimes it's hard to find the ones we're looking for, especially when you have to do like a, you know, the, um, not like clickbait titles, but the titles that actually get attention. <laughs> sometimes they're not as descriptive as they could be. So it can be kind of hard to find things, which is a little bit tricky. Um, oh, I'm glad that you like it. Yeah, I, I made this calculator for you guys, right? Um, I mean, like, it helps me as well, but it is very much one that other people can use. It is available in my shop for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, I don't think I have my shop linked anywhere, but I'm sure I can shove you guys a link later if you guys are interested in it. It just makes the calculation a little bit easier because pff, maths. I mean, if I can get something else to do the maths for me, I'm going to do that. So we have our grid spacing guide. Love it. And we have our key. Love it. Now we can flip on over to what I guess would probably end up being a future log space. Making sure there's just one page here. This journal paper is thicker than I thought it was. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't bleed or ghost, which is quite nice. I think we have a pen test in the back of this one, don't we? I would have done, because I did a video on it. So here's the, here's the pen test page. Um, so you can see all of our beautiful pens here. And nothing shows through. It is all you know good thick paper but it does not really pass the smear test uh which is probably why i am finding it a little bit tricky with this pen um <laughs> like i don't know if you can really see it there is some slight smudging here and here and very small amounts of it there but you know i think it looks pretty good for, for a one pen setup i think it looks pretty good anywho moving on so we're gonna do the future log here what style of future log? We're not going to do a calendex, even though I'm very excited to use my calendex. Uh, we're just going to keep it basic. I am not going to write out all of the little numbers, though. And because this is a one pen only setup, I also am not going to use a printable for it. <laughs> what do I want to do? Do I want a six month or a 12 month? What are the thirds? Okay, if I do... If I do 12 months, then I'm going to have to put dividers on the line, which isn't bad. We could do an Alistair, except I can't highlight every second line. That makes me so uncomfy. Because <laughs> I'm only allowed to use this one pen. Um, we could do a, we could do an Alistair one and do it as a, um, a ruled one instead. That could possibly work. Um, so we just rule a separate line for each of the different months and then have a space to write out what the event was. Alrighty. Tina has called it. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so we need to have a header. We'll just do the header here. And we were using lowercase before, so I might continue with the lowercase. I'm going to scratch off my pen. There we go. <laughs> there was a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, bummer. Woot. All right. So. Yeah. You your... log. There we go. Future log done. What a what an excellent header. I mean, it's not super decorative, but it's kind of cute. I'm I'm not very good at minimalism. Um, <laughs> like when it comes to my journal, at least, I'm not very good at keeping things super simplistic and like clean aesthetic. I'm more like a hey, let's fill the entire page with stuff. Hey kids, do you want to buy some magic? Um that kind of thing instead, uh, rather than keeping things super neat, super clean, all of, all of the good stuff that people do. Like, people have some very pretty uh, minimalist layouts, but I am not very good at, I'm not very good at stopping when it comes to putting things onto the page. I like, yeah, it's kind of like a maximalism thing. I mean, I just like I just like a full page. I don't even care if it's just full of basic ass writing. Like what the the August setup we did last year. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The August setup we did last year was a basic ass setup, but it um it still ended up feeling full because I crammed as much onto the pages as I could because that's what I like to do. Uh, 
Probably should have put a line at the bottom so I knew where to stop. We're gonna go put that line at the bottom. Oh, hi, oh, hi. Hello. Hi, how's it going? I wasn't talking to you, but do you wanna oh. come say hi to the people? Sure. See, tried to, tried to say hi to the peeps on the on the stream and Vogel's just interrupting. Hello. Vogel says hello. I have to go now. Goodbye. <laughs> Sorry, you just said hello just as I walked out. Yeah, no, I, I did notice that. I was like, well, that was poor timing on my part, but it's all good. Um, let's see. My rule is stuff. Yeah, maximalism is quite prevalent in the Vujo community. There are a lot of creative souls. Uh, I'll let you. I'll let you know. I'll let Vogel know that you guys said hi when I see him again next, when he comes back out of his cave. I mean, it is a work day for him. It's currently what nine fifty-seven a.m. on Monday morning for me. Uh, I'd actually be very curious. What time is it where you are? Um, is it Sunday? Is it Monday? Is it early? Is it late? Uh, you don't have to tell me exactly where you are because that's a little creepy. Like, hey, hey where, where are you? G give me your address. Do not give me your address. Um, <laughs> just for anybody who's like even musing with the idea, don't do it. So all of these different columns that we're rolling in at the moment, they're going to be for different uh, months of the year. And typically what I would like to do is instead of ruling out these columns i would use my light gray tombow probably in n95 or n89 to highlight every second column uh, rather than doing the ruled lines just because then you still have the dot grid underneath so you can kind of see which row lines up with which i don't know space or whatnot but this is how we're doing it this is how we're doing it the people said hello vogel <laughs> He's run away now. He's like, I got a meeting. I got, I got, I got, I got business to attend to. Okay. But what, Vogel and I had a uh, kind of like a little date day yesterday. It was quite nice. It was like a stay-at-home date. But um, we did some homemade brunch. So we made hollandaise sauce and we made poached eggs and bacon and Vogel made French toast and I made waffles and he had a little English muffin and I had some banana and it was just it was just like a nice time so we had our little brunch and then we had our household meeting which is kind of like a little admin meeting that we do each week to just you know plan the meals organize the grocery list check in about any projects that we're working on so, for instance, like that would be like the meal planning project that I'm working on. Um, that kind of stuff. My pen needs a clean. But, yeah, it was like a little Eggs Benny kind of moment. I think he had some smoked salmon with his. I can't remember what that's called. I get confused between like Florentine and whatever the other one is. Uh, but, yeah, so we did that. That was nice. And then we played Dead by Daylight, which is a multiplayer game where you either play as a survivor or a killer and you have to try and either escape or capture the survivors. It's a good time. Do I do the last one? I feel like I kind of want to, but I'm not going to because I'm going to leave that side open. Ooh, so, so very minimal. <laughs> Sunday at almost 6 p.m. near midnight. Oh, my God. Let's see. Yep, Monday, 7.58 in Australia. Happy morning to Australia. Sunday, yep. Oh, Alrighty, well, midnight seems to be taking the cake here. Very late night there. Tink. Mm. Ohio. So we are going to do this future log as if we were setting it up for a September start. So if I was starting this journal in September, I would start the future log in October because by the time I would move into this journal, I'd already have a monthly set up for September, so I don't need to record any events in September. So we'll say October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. All right, so this is a full 12 months, but kind of basing it on the idea of starting this future log in September of this year. I think for the sake of like showing you guys how this would actually work, we're going to need to put some events in. So we will start uh, with my birthday. So the way that I would use this future log is that underneath whichever initial, for like whichever month, I would write down the day number that the thing was happening. Yeah. 
So I would write down for my birthday, which is the 11th of October, go to my October column, write down the number 11. And then over here, I would write, like maybe put a dot in because I like to put a dot in. Then I can cross them off as they happen. My birthday. There we go. So my birthday and then this is going to be the event. So then regardless of which month it's happening in, all of the events just get logged in this list and then you kind of assign it to whichever column it needs to be in and write down the number for the day. Nice. So oh, what other things can we put in here? Uh, we can put in like you know, 31 Halloweenings. A-L-L-O-Ween. They don't need to be in order either. Um, like, you know, we, we've started with two October ones, but we don't have to do like all the October, then all the November, then all the December. So for instance, we could do the 12th of January because that's mom's birthday. What else should we put on here? Yeah, you'd probably put one to 30 down the side and then cross off each month. You could, if, okay, so if you do this, if you write down one to 30 and then cross off which month it's in, um, the issue is, is that what if you have things where they're like happening on the same day, but in a different month? Yeah. So like on the 11th of October is my birthday. So then that would be like down by 11 but what if I also have an event on the 11th of August um then I can't then I have to write two things right next to each other so it doesn't quite work if you have things on the same day does that kind of make sense um if you're doing it in this style like if you're doing it more in a style where here I'll go grab an, an, an example oh my legs what you get for not moving around so if you're doing it more like um, this guy here, um, you can kind of, you know, a larger column for each of the months, uh, and then you can write the numbers down the side, and then you can actually write stuff in, because you have more stuff, more space, is what I mean. This one makes it a little bit trickier, because you only have, like, this kind of amount of space for each of them, but anyway. What else should we put in? Okay, um... Yeah, you have five people with the same birthday. Uh, I have I have four, I think. On the 8th of January, we have Rory, who's a friend from, like, I don't know, lower high school. We have Slane and Lance, who are twins, so they're on the same day. And then we had somebody else, but I can't remember who it is. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad, that, I'm glad the explanation made sense. Um, I, I really like looking at different styles of future log because I think there's a lot of different ways that you can organize the information, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's a very flexible kind of layout type thing. Oh, there we go. David Bowie's birthday too. And Elvis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everybody's coming up here on the, the, the 8th of January. So uh, I think that that kind of illustrates how you, how you kind of use it, right? Um, like, you know, we could do something like the 14th for Valentine's Day or whatever. Uh, let's just say that we have, what's a day where, the, like, something that I'd actually be inclined to record? Hmm. A day that, that multiple things happen. I mean, technically speaking, my cousin and my uncle are born on the same day. I think they both got a birthday on like the 17th of October or something. Um, but let's just say that uh, we are going to do on the 11th of October a favorite things day. Kind of as a birthday celebration. So favorite things day. So the nice part about this style of future log is that because it's just like fully open, you can record as many events on the one day as you want. Um, so I don't have to just put one entry for each day, if that makes sense. Like I don't have to put favorite things day on the same line as my birthday, just because they're both on the 11th of October. I can just add it as a separate entry saying, hey, also on the 11th of October, we have this going on. 
The nice part about this style is that you don't have to section out how much space you need for each month because sometimes when you have a, you know, I'm going to say like traditional future log, it's not really what I mean, but um, if I grab you an example, ugh, which is of course on the bottom of the pile, who did this? It was me. I did this. If you have a future log where you've already sectioned out, you know, a certain amount of space for each month, then you have certain months which end up looking quite barren and other months that start to look quite full, yeah? Whereas in this one, it doesn't matter how many events you have in any given month. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do a whole bunch of, whatchamacallit, it? Yeah, whole bunch of like pre-planning to say like, I need this much space for this month or then get to the end of your journal and, and have a little bit like the <sighs> issue with, with the, the spacing on that. Anyway, alrighty. If you had an event that was multi-day, how would you note this in this style? That is a great question, Deb. So I guess the, it really kind of depends on what kind of event you're looking at. You can either log it as like multiple entries. So let's just say that I'm taking a trip. Uh, let's just say I'm taking a trip in December, okay, and I'm going to my parents' house. So I can either write down, like, the first day of the trip and say, like, oh, you know, on the 20th, we're going to parents' place. Or you could write down 20, 21, 22, 23, da-da-da-da. I wouldn't probably do it that way. I would probably just write the starting and ending date. So if I say, like, I'm going from the 20th to the 30th, which is now in October for some reason, rather than December... So from the 20th to the 30th, I'm going to parents' place. I would be like to mum and dad's and then home from mum and dad's. That's probably how I would be inclined to record it, um, just because then you don't have, like, entry after entry just being like, I went to mum and dad's. I'm still at mum and dad's. Hey, guess what? I'm still there, <laughs> like, for 10 days straight because that is a lot of entries to take up for a singular trip. Um, that's probably how I do it. What you could do is if you gave yourself a little bit more space in these columns, you could write a, like, 20-30 or if you only wanted to record it once, you could say like 20 and then in brackets afterwards, right? Home on the 30th or something. Um, yeah. Each to their own, own to their each. This is your journal. But this is how I'd probably do it. That's, I mean, that's technically how I already do it uh, in my regular future log, which is here. Yeah. So like mum and dad arrive on the 7th, mum and dad leave on the 11th. Yeah. Which has already happened. Goodbye, mum and dad. It was nice having you here while you were. So that is our future log. That is looking cute. Other than the future log, the next thing that I would typically put in my setup would be something like a goals layout. So that is what we are going to do here. Here. We'll write in our little, our little header. I'm going to clean my pen off first because the ruling was not good for the pen. He didn't like it. He's a messy boy. There we go. So sticking with the lowercase, we could go... O A L S. I've been very much enjoying this style of uh, simple cursive. It's kind of simple, but it's very different to how I actually do my regular cursive. So it does take a little bit more brain power for me to set up, but I do enjoy it. So are we going to just, are we going to keep it like super simple for the goals or are we going to do something a little bit more complicated? My mind is leaning towards simple because it kind of goes with the general of what we've been doing here. Maybe we could have like four separate boxes and um, they could put their goals into different sections based on different areas or different goals that they're working on. That might work, question mark. Um, mainly because I'm thinking like we could do a mix between that type of layout, like with the header and then the individual line, and then also bring in this kind of box with a drop shadow element because we want repeated elements on each of the pages so that then they all kind of look cohesive and look like they tie together. Okay, so in that case, shwink, we will do a little bit of a rulings, uh, and we said that it was something six and a half and then a break. So if you're six and a half, 
That looks good. Six and a half, and then a break, and then a six and a half. Another question, how many goals do you work on at once? Uh, are you the type of person who needs to work on multiple things so that you don't get bored? Or are you more the kind of person who is like okay with working on just one thing and seeing it through to completion? Or does it really depend? You know, sometimes, you know, depending on the type of goal, it might be that you need some flexibility and you need to work on multiple things because it's a really long-term goal and you just need something else to tide you over as well. Or it could be, you know, specific goals. You need to just do multiple things or, or just one or the other. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. It kind of depends for me as well in a way. But I, I'm more of having a tendency towards, to like, multiple just because I don't... I find that if I work on the same thing for too long, I end up getting bored of it, and then I just don't do anything. So if I have something else to fall back on, then I can make more progress on stuff. This is 18, which means 9, but that would be a like a perfect split. I don't want a perfect split, so we're going to put you here. Here. The, uh... That looks better. And we'll do this one here, here, here. <laughs> I've decided that rather than making it four, I'm going to make it three. And we're going to put this one all the way along the bottom. Or maybe this could be like the actions list. Ooh, I love a good actions list. So this could be like a goal plan. This is the whole like making things up as I go kind of thing. <laughs> Tend to work on too much at once, trying to work through and prioritizing goals throughout the year. No, that makes sense. I um I can understand that. Yeah. Let's see. That looks cute. And then we can do... We'll do the drop shadows now so that then I don't have to try and rule in a weird direction later. Hee 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 hee. That looks good. Love it. I'm so glad that you guys let me use a ruler. <laughs> oh, like, let's see. So even when you try and limit your goals, the five become 20. Oh, but yeah, that's tricky, eh? Um, I think that's what I find is, like, I, I like working on multiple things at once, but I also try and be intentional about saying like okay this is all of the stuff that I want to work on but these are the ones in particular that I'm going to work on for the next usually I base it on quarters so these are the ones for the next three months uh, because then it just gives me a little bit of focus like I'm not saying no to these other ones they're gonna we're gonna try them out eventually but for right now we're just gonna work on these ones let's see we've got um Pick a goal from three categories out of your standard Muxy Life 10. That's fair. Yeah, I found that I like the idea of Muxy Life, but I didn't, because one of the things, okay, there were a couple of things that stopped me from getting it this year, because I was tempted. One of the things was the cost, honestly, because uh, getting it to New Zealand, even though they opened up New Zealand shipping, was killer. So I'm like, okay, yeah, um, even if I want this as much as I do. I can't justify the, the cost of it, which was a bit of a bummer. The second thing was the fact that they kind of encourage you to set goals in each of those 10 categories, but they also specify the 10 categories. Whereas I'm more of a, a person who likes to pick my own kind of categories. Um, I'm a big believer in the idea that we're all individuals and we have a better understanding of what our lives are like than other people for the most part. Um, so I want to be able to pick my own goal categories that I'm working in. Maybe I just have trouble with letting go. I say maybe, but <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'm glad that you love your Archer and Olive Journal and your Olive and Journal paper. Yeah, I, I appreciate thicker notebook paper, provided it's not too thick. Like, I don't want it to be like scrapbooking paper almost. Uh, you know, the, the, the quite thick scrapbooking paper you get that's like very cardstocky. This one, I can't remember if it's 160 or if it's 180. 
um, I, I have a vague recollection of which notebooks have which thickness of paper, but if, if, if they fall out of the 160 range, uh, even just by a little bit, I usually have trouble remembering which journal has that. Because I know I've tried a journal, uh, just like a testing kind of journal, that was 180, but I can't remember which one it was. Um, yeah, you know, you can tell the difference between 120 and 160, but when it comes to 150 to 180, I'm just like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I think that, yeah, as long as the notebook paper sticks into the realms of like 80 GSM or under versus 120 GSM or around about there versus over 150 versus over 200. Like those are kind of the realms of paper weights that I can kind of tell the difference between. But a 10 GSM difference, not so much. <laughs> so we are putting the little drop shadows on these boxes, mainly so that they have some kind of like tie in with the key page. So that the, the key page doesn't look like it's a standalone style. Because obviously this type of box is different to the one we were using here. So it's like, well, now we're using both. There we go. Major focus in your life due to extensive issues. Not been setting goals truly, except for just focusing on unlearning many habits that I've gotten. I mean, I feel like that in a way is a goal. I, I um I like to take a very kind of flexible approach to goals and goal setting. And I'm kind of still forming my opinions on what warrants the, the term goal, I suppose. In my mind, not necessarily by anybody else's standards, but yeah. Just a, it's a work in progress thought kind of a thing. Oh, thank you for being here while you could be, Tina. It was a pleasure having you here with us. It's, um, what? I was thinking about this the other day. This is a kind of side note. Um, you know, there, there are people who used to comment a lot on my videos and I haven't seen them comment for a while, I guess. Um, and, <laughs> uh, I, I always wonder like, oh, I wonder if they're okay. I hope they're doing okay. Like, I, I haven't seen them around these parts in a while. Um, I'm not going to call them out because that might make them feel awkward. But, like, you know, if they're still around and, like, watching and stuff. But uh, do not think that I do not notice. I, um... It's also nice when they do kind of pop back up again and, and, and leave a comment and I just get this little moment being like, oh, yeah, you're still here. I missed you. There we go. Doing our little lines for some smaller decoration. Doesn't need to be a lot, but I think it looks pretty cute. So my general thinking with this page is that our person could either have two separate goals and they can be put into this section here. So they can say like, you know, goal one and why they're working on it and goal two and why they're working on it. Um, and then this section down here could be for mapping out actions or like, you know, steps that they want to take. I'm also wondering if maybe I shouldn't have had them as two separate ones if these are going to be two separate goals. But anywho, or it could be one larger goal, why they're working on it, metrics of success and action steps or something like that. But regardless, this is going to be an action step space. So we're going to putting putting this one here. Yeah, they might have just turned into a lurker. And that's all good. Uh, one off monthly, daily and weekly. So that's how I like to separate my tasks. Like, are they things that are more like habits that I'm trying to build and I'm trying to do them on a daily basis? Or are they kind of like weekly actions, which I guess you could call like a weekly habit? Monthly habits you do once a month, or are they just kind of like one-off things that you just need to do once to work on a goal? I forgot that this notebook has a bookmark. It's like sitting in here. It's very, very tucked in there. I did a very good job of tucking it in there. Um, I remember one of the things that bothered me about this notebook when I was reviewing it uh, was that the notebooks bookmark, which you can kind of see is a very, like a kind of 
bluish emerald green or whatnot is not the same color as the notebook itself. Like, there's a distinct difference there. I don't know how easily you can kind of tell. I'll just hold it up here for you. But, eh, oh dear, oh dear. You can see that difference in color? And that was something that, um, because I mentioned it in my review video. So the company reached out to me and they're just like, oh my gosh, yeah, we're so sorry. We had that problem with the manufacturer too. And we were really annoyed about it. We're going to tuck it back in there because every time I see it, it's going to, it's going to annoy me. <laughs> so I'm glad that it wasn't an intentional choice because that, yeah, is an interesting choice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Need to burn the edge of the bookmark so it doesn't fray. If I was going to be using this journal more readily, I certainly would. There we go. So this one is going to be the one-off. So O, M for monthly, W for weekly, and D for daily. And we'll put a dot because I like to put dots. And then we're going to write action. Action to be taken. All right, so I probably, if I was setting this one up for me, yeah, probably would have given myself more space for the actions list and less space for these boxes, but we're going to write down uh, what the goal is, worded as a statement that resonates with our person, and we'll give them a couple lines of that, and then we're going to put down why, like, why is this goal important? Why do they want to work on it? What is that reason that they can keep coming back to, to say, like, yep, I'm doing this? Um, and then, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, make sure you get a drink. Tink, we don't want to go thirsty. That'd be terrible. Mm. All right. So once we have done that, we then would like to do our ideal outcome, okay? So this is where we're going to put the ideal outcome. We're going to give them lots of space for that ideal outcome. And then over here, we're going to have the metrics of success. Um, suck. Success. Success has one C or two? Oh no. <laughs> S U C E S S. Success or no, it's totally two. Success. This is why I wasn't an English teacher. And we're just going to put some little boxes that they can check off for their metrics of success. There we go. So those are the metrics they're trying to hit. And then they can write out what their goal is, what their outcome that they're looking for is, that kind of stuff. Love it. Chef's kiss. Ooh, okay. Was there a question from before that I missed? Probably. <laughs> Any tips for a first time teacher? Ooh. Um, oh gosh. I do have a video, like Sarah mentioned. Yes, I have a bunch of videos on teaching related spreads. And there's one in particular that has like 57 teaching related spreads my biggest recommendation is do not make all of those layouts at once <laughs> you could pick out the ones that would be uh, most useful to you though but I find that for what when I was a teacher the layouts that helped me the most were ones where I could get a very big picture overview of stuff because that's kind of how I needed things to be to plan where I was going I would also say don't plan too far in advance because <laughs> if your school was anything like mine, they have a tendency to just like throw random stuff at you. Like, oh yeah, um, we're doing a fire drill on this day. And they tell you like three days before. I'm like, cool. I had an assessment, no bigs um, <laughs> or, or um, that kind of thing. So finding a good balance between planning ahead so that you know what's coming up, even if in the general sense, and then planning not too far in advance, you know, so that then if things come up, you're not completely thrown through a loop. Yeah. Your teacher planner is so cute because of it. Oh, I'm glad. That's exciting. I love cute planners. Um, let's see. So after our goals layout, what would we do? What would we do after goals? What do you guys normally do after your future log? Because I know some of you do 
like goal layouts and some of you don't. So we've got our grid spacing, our key, our future log, our goals, our something. Hmm. Assignment Kanban board. Nice. I like a good Kanban board. <laughs> Any tips for somebody trying to get to start a stationary business? Oh, that's a great question. I am not too sure. I mean, I guess my probably biggest advice would be know who your target audience is, because if you know who you're trying to target, then it's much more likely that you're going to be able to serve them in a way that they deserve, you know? Um, so like if you're starting a stationary business, are you wanting to start one for people who are very much into kind of like, we're, we're going to go with like preferences here because it's just easier. So it's like, you know, are we going for like a cutesy aesthetic? Are we going for like, you know, bright pastels and stuff like that? Or are we going for people who are more going to value like minimalism, simple elegance, that kind of thing? Because depending on who you're targeting, you're going to build different products. Um, it's also good to kind of know who your target audience is in terms of uh, like general demographics, uh, psychographics, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, I'm not like a business coach, so I don't really have super, super lots to say about it. But anywho, ooh, question about a Kanban board. I love a good Kanban board. Um, I can show you an example of a Kanban board. It's going to be a digital one, though, um, just because it's a little bit easier to share that with you. So let's see. This is my video board. Um, where is StreamYard? Because that's what we stream through. Okay, so sharing my screen, sharing my, my Kanban board, sharing an entire screen. Yeah, why not? Okay, can you guys, oh wait, that's, oh, that's me. Hey, there we go. This one here, can you see that? Yeah. So this is a Kanban board where effectively like you can drag things across as you do them. Um, so like this is scheduled videos that I need to actually prepare materials for. Once I've prepared the materials for it or like once, once it's ready to be prepared, I can be putting it here. So I'm like, okay, yep, our community pick live stream. Like I need to prepare that. Actually at the moment I'm filming it. So once it's filming, like we are here together, I can move it over to filming and as I go through different stages of, of organizing things and getting stuff done, I just move it across to the place that it needs to go. Um, obviously, this is a digital one through Notion, but you can do the same kind of thing through uh, just like paper-based stuff with sticky notes. Often people will do that. Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So yeah, you just have a board type layout and then you write your individual projects on little post-it notes and move them across as you get to different stages of having done things. So if we're thinking about it as a teaching example, we get out our scrap piece of paper, your board might have uh, a range of sections here. And maybe this one is like, um, you have assigned an assessment or a test, you have like collected it back in, so handed in. So like you've collected those assessments from the students, you have marked the assessments or like are marking the assessments and then like feedback has been given or something like that. Yeah. So as you reach different sections or like different kind of markers, pointers for your Kanban board, you just move your little post-it note across. So it could be like, okay, I have assigned a homework piece to my kids so I know that they're currently working on it. Once that due date is done, then I can move it across and say, okay, they have handed in that assessment, but I'm yet to actually start marking it. Once I start marking it, I move it across. Cool, it's in the marking phase. And then once I've gotten that done and I give them their feedback, I move it across to feedback. And then this effectively becomes like a little graveyard of all of the different assessments that I've given my kids and given them feedback on. <laughs> yeah. So like Emily says, you can do it through Trello, you can do it through Notion, um, a whole bunch of different online tools, but you can also do it in physical form. But we'll put that away. Shrunk, moving on over to our page number four, I guess, because one, two, three, four, five. I can count. She lied. Page number five. <laughs> um, I think that for this one, we're going to go with... Where did I just chuck my pen? 
Hmm. Like genuinely, you know, it's it's exactly the same thing as when I say like, "Hey, what do you want for dinner?" and then we both just forget what we eat. Same idea of like, "What do I set up in my notebook?" I'm just going to pull out my first bullet journal, and we're just going to see what I set up in here. So we did a future log, we did some goals and affirmations, we did a savings tracker, and then we had media lists, meal planners, flick 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 flick. Wish list, experiences, wish list, monthly stuff to do, that kind of thing. All right. We are going to set up a. We're going to set up a self care bingo, honestly, because I'm just like really into the idea of self care bingos at the moment. So we need a little s because we're doing lowercase. Self. Here. Bingo. That end got a little, a little bit small for my likings, but yeah, yeah. Physical also had them called trellos. Nice. <laughs> okay, so. I think I might need to get my calculator back out again because I'm not too sure what sizing I want to do this. Because uh, we we did have the idea of quarters, but we also had spaces between them, didn't we? Hmm. Grid spacing calculator. Horizontal was 27. So if I do five, then I need five. And then I need two. Spare. That works. We're going to do that. Yep. Get ready to provide some self-care bingo ideas. 100% because I will need them. <laughs> So I'm going to rule up my box and I think I'm going to do another one of those drop shadow-esque type things. Uh, so we will need that one to 12 and a half. I'm just really into the idea of self-care bingos at the moment. Um, I know that some people do them on a monthly basis, but I can't get myself to do that many self-care tasks. <laughs> um, unless I fill it with what I'm going to call self-care shrapnel, which is just like very, very small tiny, tiny things that you can do. Like, I don't know, notice one breath. So like, you know, if you, you're sitting there now and you're just like, wow, you know what? I could use a little bit more rel relaxation. Just like come acutely aware of like breathing in properly and then breathing out fully. Just taking that little moment for yourself. So like if I put those kind of things on my self-care bingo, yeah, sure. I could probably do one a month, but I wanted to fill my self-care bingo with stuff that was a bit bigger. So things that I could do more on like a several month time scale rather than a one month time scale. Because I find that, uh, for me at least, weeks go by super quickly. Um, days don't, which is, is odd. Like a day feels like a lot of time, a lot of the time. Um, but then months go by really fast. Weeks go by really fast. But then several months together feel a lot slower. It's interesting how different time frames will feel like a lot or a little time, depending on, I guess, depending on the season of your life in general. But, but yes. So, like, for me, a school term would drag on. A school week would go quite quickly. Um, but a school day would often feel like it went on for a long time. So it's interesting. Anywho. There we go. Because, yeah, I, um, I've noticed recently, especially with, like, the Bujo Basic series that we're working on and then some other projects that I kind of work want to work on, the weeks do feel like they're going by really, really quick because I'm just like, oh, my God, it's almost the end of the year. I um, Am I actually going to be able to get these projects done? I don't know. My ruler went a little bit cattywampus there, alas. Um, but it is yet to be seen. Gosh, okay, with these drop shadows that I'm doing, this is typically the type of thing that I wouldn't rule in. I would just do it with a, uh, like a Tombow. Um, so the whole one pin challenge in terms of my drop shadows, I'm just like, <laughs> let's see. I think I'm going to have to go and 
open my curtain soon because we have this curtain in our hallway which helps us trap the heat in our offices but because Vogel is on call at the moment I don't know if you can hear him in the background it must be pretty faint pauses to see if you can hear Vogel anyways um so we have this curtain in our hallway that helps us trap heat in our offices but because Vogel's on a call uh, he has his office door closed, which means all of the heat is in my office at the moment, which is fine for me. I don't mind being, like, a little bit toasty. Like, not, not like, super, super, um, <laughs> not super overheated, because being overheated is not my business. Do not like. Um, but my camera does not like being overheated. So, while you guys give me all of your best self-care bingo ideas, because we have 25 boxes to fill here, I am going to go and do the curtain. Yeah? There we go. Running away. Not really. I don't run. Ah, much better. Oxygen. Sweet love giving oxygen. I might have issue with time blindness. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> There's a strong possibility there. Pregnancy felt like it lasted forever and now your son's almost one. Wow. Almost happy birthday to your son then. That's exciting. So, so when I do uh, self-care bingo, I typically like to write these things in with a pen that's not going to smudge when I colour over the top of it. But because we're doing a one pen challenge, and I'm just going to assume that this person is going to continue using one pen, we're going to need a way for them to check off the self-care tasks with the same pen that they're already using. So, I think that might be like putting in a tick box or something for them to check off to say like, yes, I completed this self-care task. There we go. That looks pretty cute in the one direction. Baby, light up my world like nobody else. <laughs> Can anybody else not say One Direction anymore without thinking of the band? I think they did that intentionally. Snakes. <laughs> there we go. That looks good. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. Hey, a little box in the corner that they can cross off to, to say like, yep, I did the thing. All right, and then once I've drawn all these in, I can go and have a look at all of your great suggestions. There is our little border, looking cute. That line went a little bit wampus, but it is fine. Alrighty, so, drink a hot chocolate, manicure, pedicure, face mask, love it. Yep, corner check box. Love corner check boxes. 30 minutes to do something you love. Take a bubble bath. Go for a walk in nature. Eat ice cream. Volunteer. All right. All the good ideas. I'm going to have to clean my pen off here. See, this is where I would just scribble them down in pencil. We're not allowed to use pencil. Pencil is illegal. <laughs> love the idea. Pencil is illegal. I'm going to go put the little tick boxes in first. So this will just be a little check box in the corner that I can check off to say, yep, I did the thing. And then we can go and put the other stuff in. Because I want to make sure that the checkbox is in the same place for each of them, just for the sake of looking a little bit neat. Um, and if I start writing things in, then I might not have enough space to put in said checkboxes. And that would make me sad panda. And we don't want to be a sad panda. So, okay, on the community tab I posted the other day that I had done a podcast episode with Mark from Men Who Bullet, and it was a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed it. It's something that we've been meaning to do for ages, so actually getting you know, our calendars aligned in a way that we could actually film it was great. Um, but of course, I'm me, so I'm like, oh, I should start a podcast. I'm like, Jessica, stop. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't need to start a podcast. But it'd be fun. But I do not, I don't think I have the time to actually do that. But it did get me thinking about it. I was like, ooh, ooh. Alrighty. Okay. We're going to go from the top. And we're going to work our way through. So manicure slash pedicure. I'm going to write manicure. So is it have a manicure or do a manicure? I'm going to write do a manicure. And I'm going to write manicure down the bottom. There you go. We're going to do... Uh, and then we're going to have like some little kind of polish bottles which are looking like this now <laughs> that's what a polish bottle looks like in my head at least it's like a little bottle with a little cone with a flat top on top you know we'll just put like little little highlights on them highlights in black because one pen challenge I like to make my uh Self-care bingo is a little bit decorative. And we'll put some little stars because stars and sparkles are cute. Alrighty. Do a manicure. Done. Okay, number two, drink a hot chocolate. Alrighty, I'm going to write have a nice drink because then it's like it could be a hot chocolate. It could be something different. Um, have. A nice drink. I N K. What should I do for the drink? I'm gonna draw because I could draw a drink, but then it's like I'm gonna draw some little little drinks with straws. And we're just going to do some little hearts. It's good to have little, like, um, fill in the spaces type icons. Typically stars and sparkles and hearts are my go-tos. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, face mask. How do I draw a face mask? But it's going to be do a face mask. Let's see. Have a face mask, do a face mask. I'm going to say do, yep. I'm going to draw a picture of a smiling person with their eyes closed because they're relaxing with their face mask. And we're going to put little sparkles around them. There you go. I'm still concerned about this have a face mask versus do. I'm going to write do. Because if have is bigger, but do a face. Can I fit the word mask in here? With great difficulty. S K. There we go. And we'll put some more little sparkles around. That looks pretty cute. So I think that I haven't showed it off just yet, but I did film filling in my uh, next journal, my new, my new Joe. Uh -huh. um, so this is what I've got on my one so far. You can see like I've kind of changed up like doing cursive and all caps and kind of bold text and stuff like that to make it a little bit more visually interesting. But um, you can see that I've done this all with uh, a pen that is going to be waterproof so I can color over the top of it as I do stuff but that's something cute so that's effectively what we're working with here but doing it uh, just a little more simply um, and with the check boxes so let's see pause for five deep breaths I like that we're still working from the top though um, oh gosh you guys are saying all these really good things and then, like somebody mentioned ice cream and I'm like now I've now I just want an ice cream. Also, tink. Okay, so we had 30 minutes to do something you love. 
Um, I'm going to put in a clock. Here we go. Yeah, a little clock. And I'm going to put a little arrow in. Here we go. Uh, 30. Mins. Of. A, I'm just going to write a fun activity. And this is also part of the reason why I pencil things in first, is so that I can see how my writing's going to uh, fit in the boxes. <laughs> Rip. I'm just going to fill this one with little circles. Space fillers. We love good space filler. Kind of looks like snow. We're just like weird polka dots. <laughs> there we go. Whoops. Swell. Swell. Okay, so after this we had take a bubble bath, which I feel like would also work quite well with the bubbles. So I'm going to put it here. Take. Oop. This pen needs a little bit of love. A... needs the scribble paper back because oftentimes when it skips it's usually because something's caught on the roller ball and it's causing it to not pick up ink properly which is not the business it's not what we want ow i drew on myself <laughs> no there we go okay so taking a bubble bath boobles boobles This is a lot of bees. I'm gonna write. Usually, I would draw a bath in here, so maybe I can fit bath. There we go. That's cute. And then we can just draw some little bubbles. There we go, here's my little bath that I'm drawing in. It's looking a little bit special, but that's okay. There's the little bubbly foams. Oh, so cute. <laughs> See, I don't mind ballpoints. It's just that because this one is a cheaper, not so fun ballpoint, um, and it has quite a thick, like the ink has a, like a thicker ink consistency rather than like the um, the other ones that we were looking at before. A lot of them have quite a fluid ink. Um, it means that it, it can be prone to having some uh, issues with the um, all of that. <laughs> Let's see. I lost my place. <laughs> Scrolling back. Scroll and back. Okay, so go for a walk in nature. We're, we're lucky this isn't for me because you said the word walk and I was just like, oh, huh! no, okay. <laughs> go for a walk in nature. Go. We usually do that for Fs or. A L K in nature. Go. And we're going to put more stars because I love stars. But then along the bottom, the bottom, along the bottom, we're going to put some trees. Oh, and I'll put some trees because that feels nature esque. I could probably have changed up the type of trees I was doing, but we're just going to go with this one. It's 
It's nice and simple. I like the little doodles that get put on the self-care bingo. Makes my makes my soul happy. All right. So we had to take a bubble bath. We had to go for a walk in nature. We had eaten ice cream. Heckin' yeckers. Mm-mm. Okay. I'm going to do it. Ice cream. There's like a ball with a little kind of melted top and then a cone. And then to make the cone look waffle-esque, we do some little lines. One direction. <laughs> and we sing the One Direction song because they only have one song, right? And then <laughs> we put in the little lines in the other direction. It looks cute. Okay, so uh, I'm going to write go out for ice cream. Go out for ice cream. See, this is where I'd want to put the little hearts on it, but we're not doing that. You're that, and you're stars and sparkles. Stars and sparkles. More so just little stars. And I think I'll try and do it on a bit of a uh, diagonal here. There we go. That looks cute. Okay. After this one, we had take a walk. So we had take a walk and take a walk in nature. We have volunteer. How do you draw volunteering? Hmm. How do I? I don't know if I can fit the word volunteer. I don't know, just like do a day of volunteering. Do a day of. Okay, we need to do volunteering, and it's needing to fit in here. So V. O L U N T E E R I N G. Ha ha ha, we fit it in. <laughs> Just. And this is going to be my hearts because diagonals with the hearts. Try and make it look kind of intentional. There we go. And also, then I don't need to think of a doodle idea for it because I could have drawn some like little people or something like that but I think I'm gonna keep it easy game here Alrighty, let's see like stick figures with a vest that would have been pretty cute oh question okay so are you coming to go wild next year in Texas um I'm probably not going to uh just because I've checked the flights and they're like seven thousand dollars return um and that's from Auckland and I live in Wellington so I'd still have to get to Auckland as well um so <laughs> Like it's quite it's quite expensive for me to go. Um, so last year was kind of like a, a very much a one off. I don't know. Do they want to sponsor me to be a speaker? I'll come and speak, and then <laughs> they can pay for my flights. I don't know. I would love to go, uh, but I don't think it's um, financially viable for me at this time. Sad face. Let's see. Um, scrolling back, you know, I could probably scroll back in the actual. Yeah, it's pretty expensive, eh? Um, that's kind of why I'm probably not going to do it, sad face. But uh, let's see. We had, after our volunteering, meal out with friends. I love a good meal out with friends. Um, so let me do. Meal out with. Friends. And then I'm just going to do some little kind of cutlery-esque kind of bits. I'm going to do the plate and we'll do like a little spoon. And this one is going to be a little little pointed stars cute 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 there we go that's cute meal out with friends and then after our meal out with friends we have a day at the beach which again if it's me probably not because i don't like the sand and the ocean scares me uh, 
but <laughs> I do understand how that is like a kind of more typical regular self-care-esque type thing. Also, tink. Oh, but um, yeah, I would love to go to Texas at some point. Um, maybe when flights are cheaper. <laughs> meal out with friends and then day at the beach like we said i feel like it needs to have a sun at the very least so we're gonna put a sun in the corner because hopefully when you go to the beach the weather is nice whatever your definition of nice is for the beach um day at the beach A C H. There's lots of beach esque type doodles that you can do. I'm gonna draw like a starfish. There we go. A little starfish looking pretty cute. And then maybe like a little bucket. For your sandcastle and a little like spade thing. There's a little spade. And this one is just supposed to have little dots all over it. Which is all good. It can be like sand <laughs> sand dots <laughs> rather than snow dots. There we go. Super cute. <laughs> Let's do a GoFundMe and get Jess to go wild. <laughs> Who do you contact for, for getting me to be a, a workshop speaker? I have no idea. I would love to host a workshop. It would be a lot of fun. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure, but it would, it would be a really good time, I reckon. Uh, have a favorite genre movies night. I love a good movies night. Alrighty. Yeah, a, I'm going to put it there, so I'm going to write... Do we call it a movie night or a movies night? I'm going to call it a movie night because it fits. G H T. Mainly because when I do anything related to filming and video and stuff, I like to draw the little film projector thing or film recorder. I don't even know whichever way it is. There we go. And this one should be if you were stars and your dots, then this one should be those ones. Yeah. The little four pointed, which feels like it makes sense for movies like Hollywood glamour and whatever else. Stars, stars, stars. We could do a Boudreaux basic workshop, that would be fun. Um, I feel like it would be kind of tricky, uh, with the idea of like if you're doing a bullet journal workshop, I think that it needs to kind of be like approved by the bullet journal community or, or whatnot. Um, you know, the, the, the people who actually like run the bullet journal with a capital the, um, and a capital B and a capital J. Oh dear. And, um, <laughs> I, uh, I feel like if I was going to do a workshop, what would my workshop be about? Interesting question to ask myself. Uh, so favorite movies night, buy yourself something nice. What makes you happy? Alrighty. We like that as an idea. Um, just if you only just jumped on, what I'm effectively doing is going back through all of the different <laughs> ideas that you guys gave me earlier in the chat. So at the moment we're on to this one. So buy something nice or what makes you happy. And then previous to that, we had the favorite movie night, which we love. And then we had day at the beach, which we've already put on as well. Meal out with friends, volunteer, so on and so forth. Okay. So the one that we're doing at the moment is buy yourself something nice. Um, let's see. Buy a. I'm gonna write an item off my wish list. I s h. L I S T. Yes, we need to spell out loud because sometimes we make mistakes. <laughs> there we go. 
you can get very good DIY bubble kit, um, bubble bubble tea kits. I have a bubble tea kit that I use. They come with the the little pearls already done for me though, because I ain't got time for that. <laughs> um, buy an item off my wish list, and that is stars, which means that you should be dots again. Yeah, because dots go across. Like it doesn't actually matter. Um. I probably could have put in some kind of a uh, doodle-esque kind of thing. Anytime I think about money or purchasing things, I think of that emoji where the, the money is flying away. <laughs> that is my uh, consistent thought when it comes to anything related to money. So it's like, finances, money flies away. <laughs> Let's see. So, uh, once we've done buy an item off my wish list, we had... So take 15 minutes to reflect on your current well-being. Love it. For me, that would be using something like my little baby self-care journal. That's this guy, my little baby journal, uh, where I do little small self-care journal entries. So can I find one that's not so scandalous? Um, probably not, because usually they're just like, you know, very personal thoughts. But every so often I just do like a little kind of page of stickers or whatever like that. Um, and that kind of stuff. Let's see. This one was all about like just my general stickers and then just a, a little kind of check-in or whatnot and that kind of thing. But yes. So sometimes it's for processing kind of hard thoughts and emotions. And sometimes it's just, you know, whatever I feel like doing that's going to be a little bit of a self-care-esque activity. So we're going to, the general point was to take 15 minutes to reflect on your current well-being. So I'm going to say that like, do 15 min of self-reflection. I'm going to put it down here. Rough lick shun. And that one's supposed to be little, little stars. We love, love some little sparkles. We need something in here that's going to be like, I'm going to draw a mirror. And it's going to look kind of like a spoon, but there we go. It's a mirror that has a decorative edge. You can tell that it's decorative because I scribbled all over it. There we go. It makes sense for the prompt. <laughs> there we go. So we've got the self-reflection and then make time for reading or a hobby. We're going to assume that it's reading and we're going to draw like a little book, mainly because I like drawing little books. It's just fun. So we can draw our little book in. Go. back cover of the book on here too and then do some words on the book there we go it looks like words which is just scribbly lines really that are all kind of parallel-esque to each other um have a reading day which we are doing a reading day uh, next weekend, actually, on the 19th, my friends are coming over. We're having our readathon, which is effectively just like 12 hours of reading um, anytime that we do it. So usually it's from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We just pick out the books we want to read and read all day. Have a reading day. There we go. Put in some little hearts. I need to figure out what books I want to read, actually, during that. I, um... Like, part of me wants to start the next book in the Akatar series, but part of me is just like, oh my god, it's so big. <laughs> like, I don't, do I really want to commit to that? Because then it's, it's one of those things that, like, yes, we're going to spend 12 hours reading, and no, I don't usually read more than, like, one and a half books usually. But typically, I, I like to have it so that whatever I'm reading first on the day is something that I'm actually going to finish. And there's a very slim chance that I'll actually end up finishing Akatar if 
well, what is it? A Court of Silver Flames is the one that I'm up to. Um, and it's the Court of Thorn, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, but yeah, so I'm up to the what's considered to be the fourth book in the series, uh, if you don't include the novella. But yeah, it's big. And I don't know if I want to start it yet. Because <laughs> maybe I'll just like ease myself in and pick a nice little book that I can read quickly. But we'll see. Um, so the next one was to watch a sunrise or sunset. That one's good. I'm going to put it down as a sunrise because it is not for me. So it doesn't matter if it's the kind of timing that I wouldn't be awake for. So watch. A sunrise. I got confused there for a second. I'm like, shouldn't that be a C? And that's because there's a brand of rice that's called sun rice. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that doesn't look right. We're going to draw a little horizon on. Doodly -doo, doodly -doodly -doo. And the sunrise horizon is on a lane, but it's fine because it's the thought that counts. And this, this sun is very oblong shaped, but it's, it's all good. There's the sun. And there's it rising over the horizon. Da, 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 da. And there's supposed to be stars around it because why not? Um, but that looks kind of cute. Little Hollywood stars. <laughs> it's cute. I like it. <laughs> there we go. Um, let's see. We need to, yeah. Do, 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 do. Let's see, guilt-free internet rabbit hole journey. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say what guilt-free interest exploration. So guilt free interest. Interest. Oh, that is not a T. That is an I. Don't be fooled. See, it's got a dot, so it's okay. <laughs> Interest. X. Poor. Asian. Should have left more space for you, my friend, but we fit you in. So, this guy is supposed to be a uh, heart, I'm pretty sure, which is all good. So, I'm probably just going to do little hearts around, around the outside, around the outside. Little heartsies, heartsies, looking swell. There we go. Guilt-free interest exploration with the weird T. <laughs> Alrighty. I think somebody might need the reminder to refresh and become live. So just in case you're not watching live and you are here on the live in theory, refresh to make sure you're actually here live. Though by the time you hear this, you will have watched a lot of video. <laughs> I think that's the hard thing um, is that, you know, sometimes people talking in the chat, like I can see that they're not at the right part of the video, but unless I actually like step away from what I'm doing and type it out to them saying, hey, I think you might not be at the right part of the video. Um, it, it takes them quite a while to get to the point where I actually say that. So wah -wah. let's see. Okay. We were up to, sorry, I forgot to tink. There we go. Taking a nap or sleeping in. That sounds like a great activity. We're going to do that one. So. Take a nap. And you're like, Jess, why are you putting it over here? That's because we're going to put a little sleepy person in here. There we go. There's our sleepy person. And Zid. 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 <laughs> Hearts are followed by little, little stars. Which makes sense because it's nap time. So it's like we're in the land of dreams with the little stars. That is cute. Love it. Okay. So, um... 
what was the next one? After this one, we have... I've lost my place. Wah, wah. There we go. Excellent. Put some money into savings. Love that. And again, I'm just thinking of like the little money flying away emoji because that is the, the first thing that comes to mind anytime I think about money. <laughs> I can't draw that though. So we're just going to write uh, put money into my savings and then we're just going to draw little monies which do look like little uncolored inversions of the Japanese flag but it's fine they're, they're making it rain making it rain and the nice part is is that then the little circles come next and they look like little coins so it works well <laughs> perfection couldn't have planned it better myself there we go love it i love how full it's looking see this is the thing that i find really dang satisfying about a self-care bingo board is when you fill in all of the little pieces it's just like full because i like my pages to look full <laughs> If it's 1am, then it is fair to go to bed. Good night. Have a fabulous evening of sleep. And if you do come back and rejoin the replay, hello, welcome again. It's such a pleasure to have you back. Alrighty. After our putting money into the savings, into the savings, uh, we are going to scroll, scroll, scroll to uh, getting a manicure, getting nails done, getting a massage. Ooh. Alrighty. We can put that on. How does one draw a massage? <laughs> if it's me, probably poorly. <laughs> You're still going. Yep, better never stops. I I know that uh, on Discord I usually just set the event to finish after two hours, but very often we go for longer than that. So we're going to write get a massage. It's mainly because if I do a stream that doesn't, uh, last three hours. I don't want to set false hope and expectations. Um, <laughs> it just put a bunch of hearts in and call it good. But sad face. We're not up to hearts. We're up to we're up to um, what are these ones called? Sparkles. I'm calling them sparkles. So getting a massage is a sparkles time. Should I just draw like a? I'm just gonna draw one of those flatbed things that they have at the massage place. There you go. I'm probably gonna have to turn the journal so that my horizontal line doesn't suck. Though last time we did this, it still sucked, so. There we go. There's the massage table. And I know that they don't usually have a pillow. Well, I say I know as if I know things. Um, they usually have some kind of like a, a pillow thing, don't they? I don't know. They have something for your head to rest on. So we'll just put that there. There we go. That looks like a kind of like a massage table. <laughs> she assumed. She was assuming. There we go. All right. There we go. Yeah, it was like Denise is here as Luscious Label, but now she's here as Denise. Excellent. Okay, so after getting a massage, we have we have hobby time. We had movie time already. Um, let's see. <laughs> Britta. Boo. I know it's good for us. Boo. <laughs> I'll write it down and I'll hate it. X. Er. Size. Britta actually looking out for us and actually looking for our, out for our self-care. I'll have none of it. <laughs> like For this one, I'm just going to draw a little stretching person because it's just a little bit easier. I'm going to draw a little stick figure here who's doing a little stretch. Go. Now. It's got that like arm over and one on their hip. See? They're stretching. They're like bending over to do stretches and stuff. Um, yeah, maybe just a walk. Yeah, that's right. Much better. Much less exciting, but also like just much more approachable for me. 
Um, and we're doing little hearts because it's good for our heart. There we go. And we're going to draw one of a little running man. Okay, so running man looks like this. And then their leg goes down and over. And then their back leg goes down and up because they're running. And then one goes yep, back like that. And one goes out like this. There we go. That That is what a running man looks like. It looks like a running man, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. Am I like really slow now? Really slow because you've now caught up and we're going two times slower than we were before. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop that because I don't think I can hold that up. But yeah, I um, I was listening to an audiobook the other day and um, I kind of gradually worked my way up to listening faster and faster. So I started on one time speed. I'm like, okay, this is a little bit too slow for me. Uh, so I changed to 1.5. I'm like, okay, that's a pace that I can keep up with. That's a good um, tempo for talking. Uh, but then I was like, no, actually, I want to get through this book a little bit quicker. So I changed it up to 1.8 after maybe like an hour and a half or whatever. And then maybe a two or three hours after that, I was able to change it up to two times. And for lols, I went back to went back to listening on one time speed and I'm like oh my gosh this is awful <laughs> like it's so slow and I'm probably exactly the same you listen to me on I think it's, it's also different like um my live stream my live stream voice versus my like pre-filmed voice I, I I do think that there is a difference there let me know if you notice the difference between my live stream talking style and my um my pre-filmed and edited Kind of talking style i do think that there is a difference to those two so we've got pause for five deep breaths love that we're gonna put that one in uh so i'm going to put it down as intentional breathing tension Oh, there we go. It fits. Don't don't say it doesn't. Intentional breath work might be nice. She says as she holds her breath, don't hold your breath. There we go. Intentional breath work. And this one should be little stars. Little stars, little sparkles. What do I want to do for a breath work? <laughs> I could just do some lungs. I'm going to draw some lungs. Lungs. There we go. There's my little lungs. It's not creepy at all. I love it. <laughs> and then we'll just fill the rest of the space with some little sparkles. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. Cute. Alrighty. I just had to sound like a teacher in my edited videos. <laughs> yeah. Well, we want to make sure that I enunciate my words properly and that you understand what I'm talking about. Whereas in my live streams, you get to see the true goober that I really am. <laughs> okay. After intentional breath work, we had, let's see. Um... Doing self care right now and hydrating, and stretching, rah, rah, rah. and then we got into I hate ballpoint pens. Alrighty, so we're now into the part where like any suggestions you had for this have gotten lost in the fray. So if you have suggestions for our last four things to put on our self care bingo, I would love to hear it. The lungs look good. Lungs, the lungs. <laughs> like zoom in on them. They're so cute. They're looking a little bit weird, but it's fine. Lungs. So we will put the lungs down. Um, yeah, we need four more things to, to put onto our list. Um, so we did already have kind of like a hobby time because it was like 30 minutes of a fun activity. So we had hobby time up here. It's just that we called it like fun activity because it could be, it could be anything. I don't really consider myself to have hobbies. It's tricky, eh? Like, there are things that I enjoy doing, but I don't really consider them to be a hobby. What, 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 where's the line, I guess, when it comes to like something that's just like fun versus something that you consider a hobby? Hmm. 
Alrighty. <laughs> Go to bed at a reasonable time. Wow. Calling me out much. <laughs> All right. I love this. I appreciate all of your uh, assistances. Let's see. We do have take a nap. Uh, we have baking we don't have. So we're going to chuck baking on. Love a good bake bake time. So make make baking, do baking. Do baking? Let's see. I'm going to write do some baking. And we're obviously going to draw cookies because they're easy to draw. K-I-N-G. Go. We'll draw some cookies. They have to have little bites out of them. Little crumbs. Little crumbs. And then we're also going to have to put the hearts in because this is the heart, the heart one. We'll do another little cookie here. It has a couple more bites taken out of it. Some little crumbs. And then the little hearts. And we need some chocolate chips or raisins i suppose if you're that way inclined mm. <laughs> i don't think i've ever actually had a raisin cookie like that's not really my vibe like if i'm gonna make cookies they're probably gonna be chocolate chip or maybe like anzac biscuits or something like that uh let's see okay so go to bed at a reasonable time is a very reasonable suggestion but because i just drew a bed and that's probably what i draw next i'm gonna leave it off but know that it would be something that i should be putting on my personal list i like the idea of family time we can draw some little stick figures for those so family time there we go and we can draw stick figure people there we go We've got some tall stick figure people for parents and some little stick figure people for kidlets and they're very friendly siblings who hold each other's hands <laughs> there we go and those ones are supposed to be little stars so that looks really cute and one more here because why not so we got little stars for that good job family time alrighty so we have you guys just like came in with a whole bunch of like bam stuff. I'm gonna put in personal dance party mainly because I want to draw little musical notes. Impromptu dance party. Here we go. You can do a little dance where you're sitting. Cha 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 cha. Like tiny macarena. Do 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 do. Alrighty, put the tiny macarena away. We need to do a little dance party. Solo dance party. A R T Y, love that for us. And we also need to put in our little dots around it so that then it fits the general vibe. There we go. Little music notes to represent our groovy jams that we're going to bop on out to as part of our solo dance party. Love it. Alrighty. And oh yeah, there we go. Excellent. We had dance as well. So dance and solo dance party. So, ooh, ordering out dinner sounds good too. Yum. But let's say picking at random. One, two, three, four, five. Number, and we're going to go with, okay, excellent. There we go. Love it. Hair mask. Okay. For that one, we're going to probably draw in some hair. Uh, H. H for hair mask. H. Hair mask. And this one also has the little, uh, the little sparkles again, which is nice. We're just going to draw the hair like this. That looks like hair. Go. Yeah. And it's nice and shiny. And we'll draw a little smiling person. There we go. That looks cute as heck. Alrighty, so my recommendation would be then for our person here to fill their extra space with like 
I don't know, rewards, I suppose, for stuff that they, like, after having completed their self-care things, they can then go and reward themselves for taking care of themselves. So, for this one, we are going to need a new section. And this section is going to be in the style of our future log type thing. You know, in terms of the top um, header kind of thing and the bottom... I guess it's a footer, I suppose, uh, rather than in terms of the Alistair method. We're not doing an Alistair reward system here. Clonk. Alrighty, so we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. That's a great number. So we'd have the first horizontal, the first diagonal, the first... What's the other one? Horizontal, diagonal, vertical, and then full board. So first horizontal, first vertical, first diagonal and then full board and then they can specify how they want to reward themselves for completing their self-care bingo ain't that just the cutest so the idea is like as they do their board and fill things in once they get I don't know, the first one, two, three, four, five, or I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, wherever, whichever the first vertical is, they can give themselves a set reward for that thing. Um, and then once they do their first diagonal or their first horizontal and then the full board as a whole, I'm just going to put in some little boxes that they can check off. They can either say write in what the reward is and then check off having done it or they could maybe check it off to say yes the first horizontal was completed and this was the date that it was completed or something like that yeah so that, that works kind of nicely um postage stamp for the four corners is a postage stamp oh is that oh oh is that like a different um way of doing it like if you get these four kind of thing well that doesn't feel fair because it's a five by five board so if you did that one <laughs> if you did that one and that one then at least it would be five and that would feel fair but i don't know anywho tink let's see i think that that looks pretty good though so we had our grid spacing guide we had our key with the box that has the little drop shadow-esque type thing. We have the future log. Our goals that have, again, got the little kind of, I don't know, box with the, the little border. And then down the bottom, we have a space for them to put their actions. And then after that is where we have our self-care bingo board that we set up. I think it looks pretty good. I like, I like the doodles. I think that that looks pretty cute. I guess the question is, like, what would we then use this page for? So... Hmm, a two by two or a postage or a two by three. Oh, okay. So it's like if you did like this four or those six kind of thing. Yeah, I haven't, I don't do a lot of bingoing to be completely honest outside of this, obviously. So I don't know all of like the bingo terminology. <laughs> so this is looking pretty cute though. What do we do on this page? I mean, if it's my journal, what did, what did I do after self care bingo? I think I had some like health. I had my health trackers, but I think that was, like, at the very end, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, media and then health. Hmm. Little content-esque calendar. Nujo plan. Okay, that, yeah, no, new journal plan is something that I always like to put in here. So we're going to put a new journal plan in because that is important to me. Okay. Um, let's go see. Scrolling. Scrolling. So in new J O Nujo plan. 
with the idea being that as you use the notebook, you have a space to write down any notes that you might have for your next journal. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is like a staple in my journal. That is why we're putting it in. And I'm going to set it up in a similar way to what we had for the, I know what the word is. Future log. I got there. See, I told you I knew what the word was. <laughs> so we're going to have a section at the top for notes and then we'll have a section at the bottom for like spread or layout ideas. Um, and then they can put them in order based on that. So this can be the space for what their thoughts, thoughts and feels, thoughts and feels. And then this can be the space for their, what should we call it, page, page list and page numbers. All right. Ah. Moving my notebook over so that it's actually kind of in frame for a second. Okay. So, put myself back where I should be. Poink, that looks better. So, this header here is for our notes section. And then the way that we were doing notes in my current journal was the idea of, like, things to keep, things to scrap, things to change, and things to try. And then dot, and then notes. And then at the bottom, we're going to have whether or not it's been set up, uh, the number of spreads needed for it, and POS, like position. And then we'll have dot, and then we'll have layout. So the idea is that the person could write up a list of all of the pages that they wanted to include, and then they can specify uh, what number of pages they actually need. So it's like, is it a one page layout or is it like a two page or like more than that? And then they can specify where they would actually like to put it in the layout. That looks good. Okay, so we're gonna have some columns here. Just like we had on our future log with our little Alastair-esque kind of method. Looking pretty swell. Roll that one in. Probably could have rolled the one below it in as well. For the best. Cute, cute, cute. And we'll put this one in too just need to make sure that I don't accidentally rule over into a section that I'm not supposed to because that would ruin the entire aesthetic. The entire layout would be ruined and then we wouldn't be able to do anything anymore. So once I've filled this in, I'll kind of show you what I mean in terms of how it would be used. But um, before we do that, ju just, just like before we do that, just a little bit. Um, so obviously with the different... Uh, videos that we have on live streams, you know, because certain things are good for lives and certain things aren't. Um, I really value hearing about what you guys would actually like to see in live streams. So if you would like to give me a live stream suggestion, I do have a little kind of form you can fill in. It's literally like one question long that says like, what would you like to see in live format? Because there are some things that work really well for do with me uh, kind of style videos like this one. And then there are other things that work a lot better as more kind of um, cleanly edited, pre-filmed type things. So if you have any suggestions for live stream ideas, please do drop them at the link that's in that little chat box because I would love to hear your ideas. So in terms of how this page works though, so the top section is for notes about things that they either want to keep, scrap, change, or try. Um, and then they could also, you know, put in a section for other notes if they wanted to. And then at the bottom is where they actually start to plan out what layouts they're going to want to include. So, for instance, let's just say that they really liked the future log style, like the future log 
the style worked really well for them, but maybe the goals layout didn't work so well. So as they come to that realization through using their notebook, they could say, yes, I do want to keep this style of future log. Alrighty. Future log style is good. Log style works well. We love that. But maybe the goal layout is something that they want to change. So they put that under C for change. So C for change. Goal layout. And then they might do like a, a little bit more of an explanation to say like maybe the goal layout doesn't have enough space or something like that. Doesn't have enough space. Then let's just say one day they were scrolling through Instagram or Pinterest or something like that and they see a layout that somebody else had that they're like, oh, that's really interesting. I think I'd really like to put that in my next journal. Then they could say, oh, I want to try. So they put it under T for try. I want to try a year in pixels, say. Year in pixels layout. Okay. So... As they work through their notebook, they can write in their notes about what they want to include. And then at the bottom here, this is where they can actually start to plan out and kind of commit to having certain layouts in their journal. So they might say like, okay, I really want to have a future log, say, because we already said that we wanted the future log from before. And that future log, maybe they found it like was a good style, but maybe it wasn't big enough. So rather than having one page, they want it across two pages. So in the number of pages column, they can say, actually, I want two pages for that future log. Uh, maybe I want a goals layout, but maybe that goals layout, as said before, doesn't have enough space. So rather than one page, maybe they want two pages for that as well. That kind of makes sense as to, as to how they might actually use this. Um, yeah, it's that general gist of like, <laughs> what are my notes? What kind of thoughts or feelings do I have as I use the notebook? And then actually planning out what they want to include. So they could want to include a media log. And as we said, a year in pixels kind of thing. They might want one of those. And maybe they want to put in a year at a glance to go with their future log. And maybe they really loved their Nujo planning page, so they want to put in a Nujo plan. And after their Nujo plan, well, or wherever really, doesn't really matter, because that column POS, which is not for piece of shirt, sure, it is for position, all right? Um, so then they can put in which position in the journal they want it. So like up first, maybe they want to have their year at a glance. So we'll put that as number one. And then maybe their future log is going to be number two. And then after their future log, they want goals, which is number three. And then after their goals, they want their year in pixels or something. So that could be four, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, let's see, what are your must-have pages in a Bujo slash journal? Uh, depends on the journal, but if we're thinking about my everyday journal, which is kind of like what we've set up here, um, my must-have pages, it really changes, but usually I want something related to goals. At the very least, it's going to be either a, like, list of the goals that I'm working on for the quarter or, like, a goal planning page or whatnot, but I don't necessarily set it up at the very start of the journal either. Uh, because it really depends on when I'm setting up the journal. I do my goal planning on a quarterly basis. So hmm. I would say a future log, but there have been some journals where I haven't used a future log. But more recently, a future log has become more of a staple for me. But yeah. Um, love to hear about what you guys think in terms of like your must have pages. But having a look at what we've done. All right. So we have our grid spacing guide which is looking pretty cute. We used our grid spacing calculator available on the shop, which is just makes it like a lot easier to do the math. Um, so solid lines for the horizontal vertical halves, dashed lines for the horizontal and vertical thirds, and then dotted lines for our, what I would consider our horizontal quarters, but technically it's done with the vertical measurement. So shrug. 
We have our key, which has our cute little drop shadow box, like we mentioned before. Flipping on over, we have our future log in the Alistair method style. So we have a column for each of the different months. You list out what the events are, and then you write in the day for whichever month. So putting it in the right column for that event. We have our goal space. So a little bit of goal planning at the top here. So what is the goal? Why are you working on it? Ideal outcome and metrics of success. And then we have our actions that they can take. So one-off, monthly, weekly, and daily actions. And they can brainstorm those here. After this, we have the self-care bingo board. Uh, because we are using a pen that is not going to hold up very well to going over it with a water-based marker, uh, we decided to put those little check boxes in. It'll just make it a lot neater. And we also put in a little reward space so they can specify, hey, if I do my first horizontal, this is what I give myself as a reward. If I do my first vertical or diagonal, this is what I give myself as a reward. Um, and then our new journal planning. So a space to specify any kind of notes they have as they use this journal to say like, hey, this is working for me, this isn't. And then once they've kind of coming towards the end of the notebook, they wanna start planning their next one, they can specify which layouts they want to include. Now, if you wanted to see more new journal setups, then we do have a playlist in the top corner here. Obviously, if you're here on the live, it's not going to be here just yet. But if you're here on the replay, thanks for being here on the replay. Let me know in the comments that you made it to the end, and I will see you in our next live stream. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye for now.